Greetings, everyone. Semchen Kamchi Dewa Dang, Dewe Gyudang Denpa Gyurchi, Semchen Kamchi Dungel Dang, Dungel Gi Gyudang Drawa Gyurchi, Semchen Kamchi Dungel Mepe Dewa Dampa Dang Mi Drawa Gyurchi, Semchen Kamchi Nyering Chadan Yi Dang Drelwe Tang Yon Lake Nepa Gyurchi. Semchen Tamshe de Wadang, de We Gudang den Pargurchi. Semchen Tamshe Dung El Dang, Dung El Gi Gudang Drel Wargurchi. Semchen Tamshe Dung El Mepe de Wadampa Dang Mi Drel Wargurchi. Semchen Tamshe Nirin Shadan, Yidang Drel We Tang Yon Legne Pargurchi. Semchen Tamshe de Wadang, de We Gudang den Pargurchi. Semchen tam che dung el dang, dung el gi gu dang dre war gyur chi. Semchen tam che dung el me pe de wa dam pa dang mi dre war gyur chi. Semchen tam che nye rin cha dan yi dang dre we tang nyong leg ne pa gyur chi. Saji Puki Jushing Metog Tram, Rirabling Jini de Gempadi, Sange Jindu Mikte Ulwagi, Rokun Namdag Jing Lachapar Shok, Idam Guru Ratnamanda Lakam Niryatayami. Sangi chedang sogi cho nam la chan shu vardu dagni kapsu chi dagi chen yen gi pe sanam ki tro la pen shir sangi dru par sho sangi chedang sogi cho nam la chan shu vardu dagni kapsu chi dagi jin so ki pe sanam ki tro la pen shir sangi dru par sho Sangye chedang sogi cho nam la, chan chu bardu dagni kapsu chi, dagi chenyeng gi pe sanam ki, dro la pen shir sangye dru para shu. Find a comfortable straight back position. The one non-negotiable part of posture is a straight back. And however you can best achieve that, Please, please use that. So uh, as we did last time, let's just begin with three very long, slow, deep breaths, just to sort of clear our, clear our heads, clear our lungs, uh, clear our nadis out a little bit. Okay, so finding yourself in a relaxed and straight back position. First, just briefly consider the motivation with which you're undertaking today's meditation. And without necessarily reciting any verses, we will do that, of course, and we've done that. Um, just recall that in the long term, the reason we're performing this meditation practice is so that we eventually can ourselves become fully enlightened Buddhas. And from that stance, from that vantage point, be able to maximally benefit all motherly sentient beings. And with that firm motivation guiding your practice, Sit now and simply be aware of your body as it sits. Again, whether you're on a chair, whether you're on a cushion, just be aware 
of yourself sitting. Be aware of your body. Be aware of any sensations that may occur in your body. But just mostly sit straight. As I put it last week, I think this comes from Zen tradition. Sit like a mountain, firm, steady, unmoved. Just be mindful of yourself sitting. And without losing awareness of yourself sitting like a mountain, stable, firm, unmoved, shift most of your attention now to your breathing process. Follow your breath in, follow your breath out and try to focus without distraction on that process. As always, if you find yourself distracted, 
by sensations or sights or sounds or emotions or thoughts. Just note that that's what's happening and bring your attention back to breathing in and breathing out. And now, while keeping at least a subtle awareness of your seated position and of your breathing in and out, shift most of your attention to a state of open awareness, space-like, in which things arise and things fade away. Sensations, sounds, sights, emotions, thoughts, all of these come, all of these go, but just keep the mind open and spacious and aware.
And now within this vast open expanse, visualize in the space before you, your root teacher As mentioned last time, this should assume whatever form you find most comfortable, the form that you can relate to most easily. If you have a specific teacher you consider to be your root teacher, then visualize that person. But if you don't have such a teacher or you're uncertain, you can certainly visualize Shakyamuni Buddha, or you can visualize Tsongkhapa, or you can visualize His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Just pick one and visualize that teacher in the space before you. And this teacher should not be visualized as being in the form of a coarse physical body, but in a body made completely of light, completely luminous. And the teacher radiates joy and wisdom and compassion towards you. Try just to focus on this visualization without wavering. with your guru, your lama, visualized in the space before you. We'll go through the foundation of all good qualities, which Venerable Yin Ten La will recite for us. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and perfect guru. Correctly following the guru is the root of the path. By my clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon the guru with great respect. Once I have discovered that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is extremely difficult to find again, and is greatly meaningful. Please bless me to unceasingly generate the mind taking its essence day and night. This body and life are changing like a water bubble. Remember how quickly they perish and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of black and white karma follow. When I have found definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be conscientious in abandoning even the slightest collection of shortcomings and in accomplishing all virtuous deeds. When I have recognized the shortcomings of samsaric perfections, there is no satisfaction in enjoying them. They are the door to all suffering and they cannot be trusted. Please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Through my being led by this pure thought, with great remembrance, alertness, and conscientiousness. 
Please bless me to make keeping the individual liberation vows, the root of the teachings, my essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so have all mother transmigratory beings. By my seeing this, please bless me to train in supreme bodhicitta, which bears the responsibility of freeing transmigratory beings. Even if I develop only bodhicitta without familiarizing myself with the three types of morality, I cannot achieve enlightenment. By my seeing this well, please bless me to keep the vow of the sons of the victorious ones with fervent effort. By my having pacified distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate quickly within my mind stream the unified path of calm abiding and special insight. When I have become a suitable vessel by training in the common path, please bless me to immediately enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme of all vehicles, the Vajrayana. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is my keeping vows and samayas purely. When I have gained effortless conviction in this, please bless me to protect them even at the cost of my life. Then when I have realized exactly the vital points of the two stages, the essence of the tantric sets, and I'm enjoying the yoga of four sessions with effort without being distracted by non-meditation objects, please bless me to accomplish these according to the teachings of the holy beings. Thus, may the virtuous friends who reveal the noble path and the spiritual practitioners who correctly accomplish it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely the collections of outer and inner obstacles. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent Dharma. And by completing the qualities of the grounds and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajadhara. So visualize that light rays come towards you from the guru visualized in space and that you've received blessings to understand and accomplish all the stages of the path that are outlined in the foundation of good qualities. And now still visualizing the guru before you in space in whatever form you've selected. Make, we'll make appeals that we may be blessed to understand, practice, and accomplish Mahamudra. We'll recite seven times in Tibetan the refrain from the Mahamudra lineage prayer. And just to re remind you of the English translation of this, please grant me blessings to cut in my mind stream, the myriad ways of grasping itself, arouse love and compassion, awakening mind, and quickly attain Supreme Mahamudra, the unitive path. Yudasin Tri Wacha Padang, Jam Ningje Jang Sem Jong Wadang, Lam Zun Juk Chag Ya Chen Po Yi, Cho Nyudu To Pa Jing Gi Lo, Yudasin Tri Wacha Padang, Jam Ningje Jang Sem Jong Wadang, Lam Zung Juk Chag Ya Chen Po Yi, Cho Nyudu To Pa Jing Gi Lo, Yudasin Tri Wa Che Pa Dang, Jam Ning Je Jang Sem Jong Wa Dang, Lam Zung Juk Chag Ya Chen Po Yi, Cho Nyudu To Pa Jing Gi Lo, Yudasin Tri Wa Che Pa Dang, 
jam ying jay jang sem jong wa dong lam zung juk cha gya chen po yi cho nyo du to pa jing gi lo yu dak sen tri wa chu pa dong jam ying jay jang sem jong wa dong lam zung juk cha gya chen po yi cho nyo du to pa jing gi lo Yu dags in three watch pa dang jam ying jay jang sem jong wa dang lam zong chuk cha gya chen po yi cho nyo du to pa jing yi lo Yu dags in three watch pa dang jam ying jay jang sem jong wa dang lam zong chuk cha gya chen po yi and visualize now that your root guru visualized in space before you comes towards you and rises just above the crown of your head rotates 180 degrees so that they're facing the same direction as you are, and now dissolves into a tiny sphere of pure white light. Visualize that this sphere enters your central channel at the crown chakra and moves slowly down through your head and your throat until it comes and dissolves into your heart chakra. And at that moment, feel that you have become completely one with the mind of the guru who is the symbol the embodiment of all the attainments of all the Buddhas and try to feel the bliss, the gratitude of this sense of oneness with the guru's mind. Within this state where appearances are indistinct, do not alter anything at all by thoughts of hope, fear, or other delusions, but settle for a while in unwavering meditative equipoise. Do not cease mental activity as in swoon or sleep. Hosting the century of undistracted mindfulness and stationing alertness to be aware of any movement, hold tightly to that clear and aware nature of mind and starkly behold it. Any thought, anything that arises should be noted as that and just that.
Alternatively, sever arising thoughts abruptly as a skillful sword fighter would. When thoughts have been severed and you're stable, then without losing mindfulness, loosely relax. Machik says, tightly focus and loosely relax. That's the ground on which to place your mind. So she says, and elsewhere, Saraha says, this mind bound by worldly entanglements is freed when relaxed, there is no doubt. As taught there, you should relax without distraction. When thoughts arise and you observe their nature, then they naturally disappear and a pure vacuity dawns. Likewise, when you examine the settled mind, you see non-obstruction, vacuity, clarity, and vividness. This is known as the merger of stillness and movement. Whatever thoughts may arise, do not stop them, but recognize their movement and place your attention upon their nature as clear and aware. It's the same as in Saraha's example of the flight of a ship's captive bird. Just as a raven flies from a ship, circles in every direction 
and alights there again. When you practice in this way, the nature of your equipoise will not be obscured by anything. It is lucid and clear with nothing physical established anywhere in it. It is a pure vacuity like space where everything appears vividly. From within your meditative equipoise, you should, like a minnow darting about in limpid water without disturbing it, analyze wisely with subtle awareness the intrinsic nature of the person who meditates. Within that state of meditative equipoise, the mind is nothing physical. It is a pure vacuity, unobscured, where various things appear and proliferate, an unceasing stream of clarity and awareness. The mind engaging ceaselessly with objects, 
appears to be independent, but the objects of fixation we apprehend are just as stated by the guardian Shantideva, quote, so-called continuums and collections like rosaries, armies, and the like are false and thus the mind. That said, informed by scripture and reasoning, settle in single pointed meditative equipoise in the state where things do not exist in the way they appear.
as the Panchen's teacher, Sangye Yeshe, sings, when you're fully aware that whatever appears is conceptually apprehended, then the Dharma realm dawns independent of anything else. When awareness rests within this dawning and you settle in single pointed meditative equipoise, how wonderful. And Padampa Sangye says, whirl the spear of awareness within emptiness. The view, O Ding Ripas, is unobstructed. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take about a 10 minute break. Do try when uh, going about whatever it is you do, do during the break to uh, recall the nature of whatever it is you encounter, whatever it is happens, whomever you happen to see as being illusion-like, re-aggregate our illusion-like meditation. Um, so again, um, settling into a comfortable and straight-backed sitting position uh, with your hands, your eyes, uh, uh, whatever else, and whatever whatever form is most you're most comfortable with and is is the easiest for you to persist with. Um, just settle back into this spacious awareness that is an awareness of the emptiness of the mind itself and of all the things that arise in the mind.
And within this pure vacuity, this experience of the ultimate nature of the mind and of all things that appear to mind, that is the experience of emptiness. In that space appear before you a vast array of sentient beings known to you and unknown to you, human in form, animal, ghostly, hellish, divine, all the different realms of samsara are represented in this vast array of beings before you. And if it's easiest for you to have at the forefront of this vast array, some beings who are indeed well known to you, then make sure that you pick not just a friend, not just someone you barely know, but also to pick people who give you difficulty, people who are a problem for you. And try as you confront the friend or the loved one, the enemy, the stranger, to note the feeling tone that arises in you as you contemplate each. And having noted those feeling tones, the natural attraction we feel towards the friend, the aversion towards the enemy, the indifference towards someone we barely know or just don't know, then consider that all of these beings, exactly like you, simply want to be happy and want to get beyond suffering. And that every single sentient being throughout the cosmos has these as fundamental motivating factors. There's no difference between us. And these labels we apply, friend, enemy, stranger, are purely arbitrary conventions, reflections of a brief moment in time when we could say of this person, oh, they're my friend, or oh, that person's an enemy. We know that these are changing identities. Friends become enemies, enemies become friends, strangers become one or the other. These are purely arbitrary. There's no, no such thing as friend, enemy, stranger, except in a brief conventional sense. And in this sense, we recognize that actually we're all just the same in what we want what we don't want, and that most of us are really bad at figuring out how to get what we want and how to avoid what we don't want. And so just as we naturally have compassion and love towards ourselves, want ourselves to be free from suffering and to achieve happiness. So if all these beings are exactly like us in having these same basic needs, then it's natural to extend that wish for our own happiness and our own avoidance of suffering to these beings. And it's a matter not just of wishing that other beings be happy in the way we want to be happy or free from suffering in the way that we want to be suffering. It's a matter as Mahayana practitioners, as bodhisattvas of seeing to it that that happens. And we can only do so much while sitting on our meditation cushion, but we can, through visualization, reinforce our bodhicitta, reinforce our dedication to liberating all beings, wherever they are, by whatever means are most conducive to their achieving their own spiritual aims. And so with that, firm commitment of the bodhisattva powered by our sense of bodhicitta, just visualize that from your heart, which is itself 
thoroughly purified, thoroughly the heart of a Buddha. There emits, there flows forth, there radiates streams of nectar light that enter into the bodies, purifying them, enter into the speech, purifying it, enter into the minds, purifying that too of all these beings arrayed before you in space. And just visualize that light flowing forth from you and filling them, purifying them, releasing them from suffering, placing them in happiness. And when you feel that all the countless sentient beings arrayed before you have been completely purified, completely illumined, completely released from their sufferings, given all possible happiness and attainments and have themselves become luminous beings, visualize that they begin to flow through space towards you and to dissolve, to melt into your heart chakra. And when the last of these luminous beings has melted into the heart chakra of you, also a luminous being, simply rest in the feeling of bliss and emptiness and of completion. And listen now to the Panchen's instructions for post meditation. Having familiarized yourself in this way, you must realize precisely the mode of appearance of any object appearing to the six types of consciousness. Its mode of existence will then starkly and vividly appear identification of whatever appears is the key to the view. In short, whatever appears, whether your own mind or something else, you should not take to be real. You should ascertain its mode of existence and always maintain that awareness. Knowing this, you should subsume all phenomena of samsara and nirvana into a single nature. As stated by Arya Deva, the viewer of one entity is explained as the viewer of all. The emptiness of one is the emptiness of all. 
Thus, with an proper meditative equipoise on reality, you are free from the extremes of mental elaboration of samsara and nirvana, such as existence, non-existence, and so forth. Yet when you arise from that equipoise and analyze, it is undeniable that dependently arisen actions and agents naturally appear merely through naming and imputation, like a dream, a mirage, the moon in water, or an illusion. When the empty is not obscured by appearances and appearances are not negated by the empty, the excellent path where emptiness and dependent arising have a single meaning will be manifest. Okay, we'll uh, dedicate our merit. Yeah, Sem chogrim poche, make panam ke gyochi, ke wa nyampa me payang, long me gong du pel wa shok, tong ni tawa rim poche, make panam ke gyochi, ke wa nyampa me payang, gong me gong du pel wa the wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, the incomparably kind Supreme Tenzin Gyatso, may you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Embodiment of the three divine refuges who blesses all, Gendon Tenzin, holder of the teachings, may your lifespan last for eternity. May your excellent deeds pervade all of time and space and continuously ripen for the nourishment of myself and others. Alex, you want to lead us through the Tibetan? Ze chen cho du kun tu cha pa dang dak so cho e so su da min cho. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks to everybody.